My name is Minnie Getz. I'm recording this onto a cassette tape because my life has gotten really crazy of late. I had sex today. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> if you're listening to this without my permission, please stop now. Just stop. I'm gonna kill you! This makes me officially an adult. Do I look different than I did yesterday? Hey. Hey. It feels so good to imagine that he might be thinking about me. I wonder if anybody loves me who I don't know about. There's a monster. I get distracted sometimes. Overwhelmed by my all-consuming thoughts about sex and men. I don't know what's wrong with you. I think you'd be one of the boys. What are you waiting for? You have a kind of power, you know. You just you don't know it yet. I got a girl, she's sweet as can be All the other boys wanna be like me And oh, isn't life sweet? I refuse to be some sniveling crybaby This is my life Isn't life sweet? I don't wanna brag, but it was quite a piece when I was your age We can run to the mountains We can sail the Emerald Sea Drop a coin Everything looks totally different to me now. It's true when I wake up and I see you next to me. It comes true when I wake up and I see you next to me. This is for all the girls when they have grown. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for coming on this Friday afternoon. Welcome to you and congratulations to you for your wonderful movie. Currently almost at 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so speaking of the um, warm reception you guys have been getting for your movie, um, one of the terms that comes up a lot, has been coming up a lot in reviews and just... Um, articles about it is the word revolutionary, that it is a revolutionary look at um, a young woman's sexuality. Um, do you feel like it's a revolutionary movie? Does that make sense when you hear that? I think our standards are really low. I think having <laughs> just like a woman who looks like a real girl and who's admitting that she thinks about sex, I guess that that's kind of revolutionary or somehow it's a little bit radical for all of us. Um, but I think that's sad. I think Really, it's kind of a simple story just about what it feels like to be a teenage girl. It's thoughts that I think most young men and women alike can relate to. And um, yeah, I think it shows something more about other movies than about this movie that we're saying that about this. Yeah, I think it's also just like revolutionary in life. Like day to day, we don't even want to talk about girls having sex, let alone make a movie about it. No, I think that's absolutely true, and I think um, one of the... Yes, I think it's that there's a dearth of comparisons, and some of the other movies that sort of come up um, in articles talking about like the broader um, topic of young female sexuality are Little Darlings and The To-Do List. But both of those... I mean, one was made in the 70s. The other one is more recent, but is much more of a sort of like straight up comedy. And a good friend of mine made that movie. Yes, <laughs> very good movie. <laughs> um, but I wonder if you, if you think that it's sort of like, it's taken this long to get to a movie like yours, because in the past it feels like, oh, movies about young female sexuality, eek, we can do it if it's through the sort of lens of broader comedy, that it's somehow safer. Well, I think before Bridesmaids, people said you couldn't even make a rated R movie about a girl. That was sort of the rule that people then said, Bridesmaids broke this down, but then it became, okay, well, you can make a comedy about girls that's rated R, and it will make money. And then we just kind of keep inching forward, little bit, little bit, little bit. Um, so hopefully we can just start making stories about people of all genders and all races. and, and Better late than never. Right. Wouldn't, yeah. that be, wouldn't that be a revolutionary idea to make yeah. movies that reflect our lives? Um, well, this project, Mariel, was very important to you, obviously. I mean, you have a history with it. You did your own stage versions. Um, so when you were casting, how did you know that this woman sitting right here uh, was the right mini? Um, the part is really special to me. 
I care about Minnie more than I've ever cared about any other character I've ever written, definitely, or really come across. And she's so special, and I felt like I needed to have all of these contradicting things in this one character. She needed to be able to play the comedy and play the drama really well. She needed to look at once like a little girl and then like a grown woman who's really comfortable with her sexuality. She needed to be able to be really vulnerable but really ballsy. You had to believe that she might grow up to be a comic book artist, but she had to be kind of strikingly beautiful. And so... It was all of these contradicting things that I never thought I was really going to find in one person. And then when Belle came along, it was like, oh, my gosh, I found her. Amazing. And was it immediate? You were just like, okay, done, and you're hired. Well, she sent in a tape. And it's really weird to cast someone off a tape when you haven't met them in person. So we kept Skyping, and I would keep making her audition more and more. And then finally I was like, we have to meet in person, otherwise this is just too weird. So we, she came to New York, and she and Alexander and I sat in a room and we kind of worked through a scene to see what their chemistry was like. And then after that, I was like, okay, I was right. Yeah, so what, um, what was your experience? I mean, you obviously, I, I've read that you, you know, became sort of really passionate and were, and were pursuing this hard. You, you weren't just sort of like, yeah, maybe I'll do this. I was obsessed with it. <laughs> um, actually, when I did my audition tape, at the end of the tape, and I've never done this before, I made like this weird message to Mari, where I spoke to the camera as myself, and I was like, hi Mari, um, I'm Belle, I'm in London, these are all the reasons why I relate to this character so much, um, I really need to have a conversation with you about this. <laughs> and yeah, luckily she listened, when, that's when we ended up Skyping and stuff. So what were those reasons? Why were you so passionate about it? Everything. I was reading the script and like, page after page, I was like, I relate to that, I relate to that. It was just captured so well the essence of how it feels to be a teenager. And I think that's very specific to being a teenager. You know, your emotions are so on the surface and everything's so heightened and someone touches your tit and you think you're in love with them and then <laughs> someone breaks up with you and you think you're gonna die. And I think that in a lot of the movies I've been watching when I was growing up, um, teenagers are portrayed in this way where they just kind of breeze through their teenagehood and they have like a really clever answer for everything and that's honestly not how it feels no, so I just yeah felt really passionate about the fact that it was so honest absolutely um did you so the, the whole idea of um you know the movie sh you know shows you having sex and enjoying having sex and and that i think is part of this whole idea of like oh my god it's revolutionary a woman a young woman is is um, introduced to this and is enjoying it but then there's you know there's also the the darker side of you know sort of spiraling down um, how did you walk that line where you were able to show this sort of you know hitting rock bottom is as it were without moralizing or you know sex is bad um i mean i think that's a tribute to your um touch as a filmmaker but how did you do it thank you i think that was definitely a goal was to try and enter into the story without judgment and tell the story from minnie's point of view i think we've seen stories about an older man and a younger woman before and they tend to always be from the male point of view and they tend to be from a grown-up's point of view with the sort of moralizing happening on top of it so the only way I knew how to do that was to just always be trying to check in with where Minnie was emotionally and making sure that if she doesn't feel like she's a victim in that moment, that we shouldn't be feeling that way. If she feels like she's having a great time, then the scene should be really fun. And mm -hmm. if she feels scared, then the scene can be kind of scary. Or if she feels like she's in over her head, we should feel that. But a lot of the times when you're doing the most dangerous things in your teenagehood, I think you're probably having a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You're not like, oh, no. <laughs> so... How about you, from your point of view, since, you know, so much of that um, is on your shoulders and sort of depicting, you know, her point of view? If I started to judge Minnie Murrow's relationship for, from my, like, as an actress's point of view, then I wouldn't have been able to play Minnie truthfully. So, if Minnie wanted to have sex with a 35-year-old guy, I was, like, on board. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, and I think also the great thing about how amazing Mari wrote it and like the direction and how we wanted to portray it is like, like you said, without judgment and their relationship is imbalanced and the balance changes and that's representative of any relationship, not mm -hmm. just one with a huge age gap. Mm -hmm. it, it ebbs and flows and they have a moment where she feels more in love and she feels like he's not in love and then it will change. And then there's weird moments where you think it might work and then you feel really sick for thinking mm -hmm. that. Um, yeah, so I think that keeping that balance was really important. And I think part of that is, and it's also a tribute to your performance, is that, you know, she is 15 
and you are not 15, so you're close enough that you know it's not an eternity ago that you can sort of remember what it was like, but you're able to um, capture her sort of budding maturity and her immaturity that she still really is in some ways a yeah. child, even within like a couple of seconds of each other. I mean, well, there's... That's what you're like when you're a teenager. Yeah. You're kind of an amalgamation of so many different versions of yourself and you play at being adult, don't you? So mm -hmm. there are moments where Minnie is really, really precocious and acting like an adult and then some moments where Monroe is regressing to a 15-year-old boy and that's when it feels like it might work. And then the next scene, she's like, screaming her head off in the bath and acting like a you know petulant child so i think yeah or that's telling her lover <laughs> she's gonna tell her mommy on him <laughs> yeah. exactly that's being a teenager yeah. Yeah. and that scene is really um that, that's a really powerful scene i mean and, and he calls her out on it alex's character monroe and you you see your face you're like oh wow yeah what he's and it's like the realization well, because when you're a teenager, sometimes you, yeah, you get into situations you actually can't handle. I think that's a moment where you really get to see Minnie as, oh, right, she's a teenager. She doesn't actually have the emotional capacity for right. this. She's in over her head. Right. And it becomes really clear in that moment because you've kind of been sucked into this feeling of, like, actually, they're kind of cute together. <laughs> and maybe he will get his vitamin just business off the ground. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think part of the, um, this, it seems like the, the movie is just so um, honest and raw, and I imagine from my outsider's perspective that um, it really took the sort of intimacy between the two of you to sort of get the dialogue and the shorthand um, as filmmaker and actor. Um, did you have a long rehearsal process? We started working together a number of months before we started filming, just Skyping and having regular conversations, which I think were really helpful. Um, and then... Bell was working with a dialect coach in London, so we would kind of check in according to like what work they were doing. But then we had about two weeks of rehearsal in in San Francisco before we started filming, which is a lot of rehearsal for mm. a film, for a, especially an indie. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, really useful, it's crucial. Um, and it was just the two of you. We had about a week us two, and mm -hmm. then two weeks with Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah, where we just kind of went through the script chronologically, because obviously we were going to shoot out of order. And I, I actually learned the whole script kind of like a play before I got there. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that there's so much of it. So every other line was minis. So I really needed to know exactly where I was coming from and where I was going at each point and emotionally how, at what you know, point in her journey she was. Um, and in that time, we talked about things that would maybe feel uncomfortable or things that didn't feel right. And then we would rework stuff. And Mari was amazing, so collaborative. She would fight for something if she really wanted it to stay in, or <laughs> she would listen to us and go away and, and rewrite stuff. And, yeah, it was just a time to try things out and get a good basis for where we were so mm -hmm. that once we got on set, we could allow ourselves to discover new things. Um, so you had this sort of, you know, intense... Um story that's very female and obviously both being women you can sort of imagine um, or understand what Minnie was going through and you guys had a connection over that so how did Alex fit into all of this as the male outsider did you welcome him into your lady he world? He was actually very <laughs> sensitive about it all and I think he was driven by the fact that he felt like this was also a project he hadn't come across either so in a lot of ways I feel like he kind of let us tell him what it was like to be a girl and mm. sort of sat back and listened in a way, kind of like, oh, I didn't know this. Interesting. Which is what I think the experience of some men watching the movie is, where they suddenly go, oh, I can relate to this teenage girl. Weird. Right. And what a revelation. We've been doing that for male protagonists for our whole lives. We're totally conditioned to do that. So I think that's a really positive thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so he could hang with the ladies, okay? Sorry. <laughs> he could hang with the ladies, okay? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I mean, literally, like, between all the sex scenes, like, Alex and I and Mario would just, like, chill on the bed and we'd be in our robes <laughs> and we'd just be, like, making jokes with each other. It's very relaxed. He's also so relaxed about sex scenes because yeah. he's done so many on yes. True Blood. I, I, mean, I felt like I was in good hands. The episodes yeah. of True Blood where he wasn't naked were the <laughs> minority ones. It's true. Um, well, speaking of the sex scenes, these this, these were your first sex scenes, right? It was my first on-screen kiss. Okay. So, yeah. so yes. We popped all of our cherries. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> um, it must have been a real hardship to have your first sex scene with such an ugly man. Poor me. I mean, <laughs> he's so unattractive. <laughs> no, 
it was fine. I mean, like I said, we had those two weeks rehearsal, so once we got down to it, um, I knew, you know, if it feels truthful in your head, if you feel emotionally in the right place, then it feels fine. Mm -hmm. um, and It's I almost like there's more anticipation leading up to it. And once we did the first one, we were all kind of like, oh. It's totally fine. It was only when I went and did the one with Ricky Wasserman <laughs> because Alex was my first one without Alex. So I was like, oh, what do I do? You cheating suddenly, on like, him. Me having to take the lead. <laughs> you had to be like, look, this is how we do sex scenes. <laughs> right. No, that's a great scene because it's sort of like she's the one who's experienced. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the scene, there's, I mean, there are countless scenes that um, feel so, I mean, the whole movie feels like so incredibly honest and real, but um, when you're standing naked in front of the mirror, um, to me, that seems even more sort of daring and revealing and sort of, you know, you're vulnerable than the actual yeah. sex scenes. Were you, was this a difficult scene to, to I, make? In the actual filming process of that scene, I mean, I had really no idea how long the shot was going to be. I didn't really pay attention to where the camera was. I didn't know the size of the shot because um, I thought that would make me feel more intimidated. Mm -hmm. I really... Um, and the only people in the room were Brandon, our camera operator and DP, and Mari. So, um, I don't know. I really tried to just go to a very private and intimate place and forget about everyone around me. Um, and, I th you know, I felt like it was one of the most poignant scenes. I think that men and women alike can, you know, recognize that moment when your body is changing mm -hmm. and when you're a teenager and everyone has, you know, checked out what's going on in the mirror, so... Um, and we talked a lot about that being sort of the moment that you would see the most, that would be the most naked in the yeah. film. It was important that the most nudity that we see was not in a sexual situation. Right, right. Just so that it wasn't feeling gratuitous mm -hmm. or like we were exploiting our young actress. For sure, and I feel like that's such that was such an important element that so much nudity. I mean, it can and it's sort of always teetering, you know, in any time, uh, depending on who's making the movie and what the point of view is, is is like gratuitous, and it never felt that way yeah. with this. And I'd imagine that that was, you know, the product of lots of conversations and care and understanding. Yeah, it was, it was always walking that tightrope and trying to be really sensitive to what our experience was when we were teenage girls and trying to capture that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think every teenage girl, I mean, that's what I talked about when I got back from the screening. I was like, everyone I know has, like, you know, closed their bedroom door and looked at themselves like, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> I've had breasts for three full years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, the other thing, too, and this is right in the beginning of the movie, it starts so um, dynamically, you know, she's like, I just had sex. And you're yeah. just like, you feel like a superhero. And that's sort of a, a, a note you play off of later with the animation. But... Um, the shot of your butt. <laughs> yeah, which I didn't realize was going to be like that close until I saw <laughs> the film. Sorry. <laughs> it's a very nice shot. But um, what was that choice? What, how did you make that choice? Um, actually, when I was at the Sundance Director's Lab, we did a workshop that was all about opening shots of films and really carefully thinking through what that opening shot was. And it was really important to me that we established like right off the bat look, this is going to be a movie about a girl having sex, but she's happy about it. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to capture that feeling that I think we all had when you do first lose your virginity, where you kind of have a new swagger to you and you're walking through the streets being like, can people tell? <laughs> do people know? And um, A glow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And looking at your cat and being like, do I look different? Right. right. Um, so that was kind of the whole impetus behind it. And just to kind of start off the movie with some fun, too, because people hear what the movie is about. They hear that it's about 15 year old sleeping with her mother's boyfriend, and they think it's going to be really depressing or something that's going to make you feel terrible about the world. And I think this movie doesn't do that. I mm -hmm. think this movie actually is really empowering and makes you feel you go on a journey. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's tough at times, but I think ultimately it's a movie that makes you feel good about humanity, I hope. Right, and I think, you know, it's the, the, the journey that she goes on is really like, I don't need a man, I love myself, and, yeah. you know, she she's got her whole eventually. life in front of her. Um, I love that part at the end with the, sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, um, you know, when she's on the beach and she's just like, yeah, hey, you know, yeah. <laughs> she's got it figured out. Um, well, when did you see the final cut, and what did you think? So I saw it. I got sent a screener before it had been sound mixed, before the animation had been put in, and I watched it with my mum, <laughs> um, just, like, it's on a little TV. <laughs> well, I don't know, like, she's, like, the best woman in my life. I, I actually, 
she read the script before I even signed on to the movie. I just like trust her opinion implicitly mm-hmm. as an as an artist. Um, uh, yeah. She did say to me though, she was like, you're going to be covered up for the whole movie, right? <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and then, but the first time I saw it on a big screen was at Sundance. Oh, wow. It was amazing. We had it at the Eccles Theatre, which is like a, a thousand seater. And we, I watched it in between Mari and Alex and the credits started rolling and I just burst into tears. Oh. Um, and Mari turned to me, she was like, I have to get up on stage and talk, so I'm going to move away from you because otherwise I'm going to start crying. Because <laughs> um, yeah, well, I knew I was going to start crying if I <laughs> looked at you crying. Yeah, I mean, that was sort of the beginning of this wave of critical acclaim. And were you, was it nerve-wracking to debut it at Sundance? Did you My have God, any yeah. idea then that it would be received the way it was? No, no, you hope, I guess. You hope that you make something and anybody likes it. But no, I, it was terrifying. It was a giant theater. There was a moment where I had to go out and introduce the movie. And um, Trevor Groth, who's one of the head programmers there, I was like, I'll show you what to do. I'm gonna, and he kind of brought me to the edge of the stage, and my brother said he saw me look out at the audience and go, holy shit, <laughs> and back out. And he could just see my face like, oh my gosh. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was kind of out of my body the whole time. But um, no, you make a movie like this, I think I thought, you know, this is a movie like some women are going to really love. But to have it be that other people have really related to it and that it's gotten the response it's gotten has been totally shocking. Mm. And it's meant especially a lot to me when men have responded to it. And men have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've had so many people tell me. I had a guy come up to me with, like, holding back tears at Sundance, being like, this movie meant so much to me. I've been trying to get myself together for the last five minutes to come and approach you. But I've never related to a character so much before. And that meant so much to me to feel mm-hmm. like, oh, right, boys can relate. And I hope that it means we can open up more of a dialogue between us as genders. Excuse me, I have a cold. <laughs> um, but that we can start to realize that we're not so different from each other. Mm-hmm. We all think about sex. We all have these thoughts. Women aren't yeah. just there to, to serve as objects of men's <laughs> desire, despite what Wait, we might be told what? by the pornography industry. <laughs> right. And for you, Sundance was amazing. Yeah, it was I mean, it was a bit nerve-wracking because people were already saying amazing things about the film before it opened. <laughs> I was like, what if you all hate it? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was an incredible experience. and The response was amazing. Um, we think we're going to move on to the audience Q&A. I just have one um, last question about Kristen Wiig, who plays your mom. Um, she's a very interesting character because she's sort of aloof and sort of doing her own thing and has got her own issues and, and clearly not aware of what's going on with her daughter and her, her own boyfriend. Um, so it's, it's, to me, this sort of... Um, maternal figure is Aline, you know, the, the, she sort of comes in in like this superhero kind of way, um, you know, she, I, correct me if I'm wrong, she never even meets her, but it's sort of like this, this, you know, superhero figure of maternal kind of over, do you, do you yeah, see it that way? she definitely kind of, Minnie is so desperate to have any role models mm-hmm. or anybody to even talk to about what's happening in her life. She starts recording her diary into a cassette tape and she sends fan letters to an artist who she's in obsessed with, named Aileen Kaminsky. And it's kind of all of these little, yeah, signals out into the universe, like, somebody please relate to me. And then eventually when she gets a response from Aileen Kaminsky, a letter in return, it means so much. Yeah, and Kristen is fantastic in that role. Kristen is amazing. amazing. And she had to take on a really difficult role because I think a lot of things that people are sort of um, like to talk about when it comes to female characters are whether they're likable or not. And this is obviously a character who's pretty nepotistic and Mm -hmm. I mean not nepotistic narcissistic sorry I have a cold Um, (laughs) she's narcissistic she's partying she probably never wanted to become a mom and uh, so that's a could be considered or called an unlikable character Mm -hmm. but she brings a lot of humanity to her and she's just feels like she just stepped right out of the 70s she's so good I feel like that whole, like, she's unlikable, especially with female characters, is often just code for, like, she's complicated. She's not a yeah, doormat. Yeah, I'm so over it. Let's she's not a, a girlfriend or the, like, there. mother. Who's she's, like, like yeah. a 3D fleshed out person. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm unlikable. I'm deeply unlikable. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. We will take it. Audience questions. Hi. Uh, this question is for Mario. Um, how did you feel uh, the first time you heard that the film would be going to the Sundance Film Festival? Like, what was your first initial reaction to that? Um, I mean, I are, are we allowed to swear? Yeah. 
I actually said um, into the phone, I said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> that was my direct response, my direct quote. I couldn't believe it. I mean, it was the best moment. I was w driving down the freeway with my mom. We had just visited my grandmother, and we pulled over so we could scream and cry. Anyone else? My question is also for Marielle. I'm wondering, what do you enjoy most about directing? Definitely it's working with actors for me. Um, I, I'm an actor myself, and I really love the craft of acting, and I love kind of the complicating dissecting of a scene that you get to do, where you read it through and something that's not quite working for some reason, and you have to kind of talk it through and figure out how to get to where you need to get because you know how it fits into the bigger puzzle that you're putting together, but you need to come up with all the little puzzle pieces that make this scene work. So I just find that to be really, it's kind of making art on your feet and it feels really fulfilling. Hi, this question is from Periscope. Um, I was curious uh, for Belle, if you could have added something else for the character in the movie, uh, and you had your pick of something that wasn't in the movie already, what would it be as far as the, what the character is gonna, is gonna experience? I feel like she experiences enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, the book has, it's a lot darker. It goes a lot further. And there are a lot more characters that like we see more of Minnie's friends and you know, people who have um, many different roles in her life. And obviously that would have been interesting to see because I'm sure like, Kimmy isn't her only friend. Um, but no, I, I, I wouldn't change the movie for anything. Sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the only thing is I wish that we'd had clearance to like, play some Janis Joplin or for, like them to sing along to Janis Joplin because that's Minnie's favorite artist. <laughs> You have your nice uh, Iggy Pop We've got Iggy Pop in there, yeah, which is pretty good. Other questions? No? Yo, there's one in the back. Hi. I just wanted to ask a question. Recently, those statistics were released about, like, Hollywood movies and representation. And I just um, wanted to know your opinion on, like, how that's represented in indie films as well and how, that's, how you feel about that. Like the ACLU investigation into like yes, yeah. and like all the kind of the percentages of like who's making films and who isn't making films. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's really pathetic. I think it's really sad that the numbers are so low. I think it's nine percent of movies are being made by women overall. The the numbers are a little bit higher for indies. I think the the year that I was at Sundance this past year, I think over 30% of the movies in competition were made by women, and that was r a really big deal. Um, I mean, I guess my feeling is, like, I love other female filmmakers. I'm trying to get to know... I'm friends with so many other female filmmakers. We're all kind of supporting each other and trying to kind of band together and change this and make it different. And I really believe that we've hit a tipping point where the public outcry has made Hollywood just sort of shamed into having to... <laughs> Uh, hire more women, and if that's what it takes to get more women getting their stories told, then great. I'm happy to be the beneficiary of that. I'm happy to be one of the women that people are calling on for all of these articles and stuff, because I'm, I think we need to keep talking about it. I think there's been a mentality where a lot of women for a long time have felt like they needed, to, if they were a female director, needed to just not talk about it, to just do their work and keep going and, um, and change it from the inside, but the numbers haven't changed in 30 years, so... We need to talk about it and, um, you know, just take down the patriarchy altogether. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Hi. Uh, I heard that your next project is going to be a Ruth Bader Ginsburg movie. And I was yeah. just wondering if you had any scoop you could share with us. It's true. It's a movie about a young Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's not like a biopic that takes her whole life from cradle to grave kind of thing. Not that she's dead. She's alive and kicking and awesome and so badass. And I just adore her. Um, but it's focusing on a specific period of her life, and Natalie Portman will be playing Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, it's very exciting. Movies about it? powerful women. Have you we met need more her? of yeah. them. Not Natalie. I assume you've met your actress. <laughs> Have you met... Uh, I haven't met RBG yet. I'm hoping that I will soon, uh, though. The notorious RBG? Yes. Uh, anyone else? Okay, well, thank you again, everyone, for coming, and thank you. Thank you. Uh, everyone go thank see you. Diary of a Teenage Girl, Marielle Heller and Belle Pauly, wonderful movie. Thank Have you. Have a great afternoon. Thanks Bye. for tuning in. Thanks.